Okay, so today I'm sharing some of the worst makeup products I've tried over the last few months. I like filming these videos every few months as like a roundup. I share a ton of favorites videos, a lot of recommendations, but I like to keep things balanced and also talk about products that did not work out for me. Some of these products are truly just like bad quality products that I really wouldn't recommend trying for one reason or another, which I'll share in today's video. But I do feel like some of these that didn't end up working out for me could work for you if you have a different skin type, which again, I'll share. So if you want some alternatives to the products I didn't like, I'll put some in the description box below. I try to include like a drugstore option and a high-end option, but I just kind of wanted to share updates on these now that I've used them multiple times and share why I don't like them. If these are not your types of videos, I totally get it. I just uploaded a favorites video on everything I'm loving for the summer season. It was kind of like my June and July favorites all wrapped into one. I'll link that video below. That's a little bit more positive, but I, I try not to bash the brands or the products. That's not my goal or my intention. I just want to share like, you know, very thorough reviews. So if you're trying to decide whether or not these could work for you, I hope my video is helpful. So let's jump into it. Let's start with this product. I kind of picked this one up on a whim. So the Ulta Beauty brand was on sale. I think it was specific products, maybe like complexion products or base products. And I do really like a ton of products I've tried from their in-house brand. I think it's pretty underrated. And there are some products that really beat high-end formulas in the same category. So I grabbed the Youthful Glow Concealer. This has pretty good reviews online. And this is one of the products that even though it didn't work for me, I think it could be a good option for you depending on what you're looking for. This is a very lightweight, light coverage concealer, which is actually what I've been going for a little bit more this summer. My go-to concealer has been the Kosas Concealer, and I've actually been using it as like not a foundation, but in place of foundation, I'll wear a tinted sunscreen and apply that product and blend it out. And I love the way it looks. This reminds me of that concealer a little bit, but I would say the coverage is definitely lighter and the formula is a little bit thinner and it's not quite as glowy. So if the Kosas concealer is like too much for you, this is a step down in all three categories. It looks really, really natural on the skin, which I like because sometimes if I'm skipping foundation or I'm just wearing like a tinted sunscreen and I want a little bit of coverage because I deal with a lot of redness around my eyes and I apply a little bit of a heavier concealer. It just does not look natural on the skin at all. So I love the fact that this blends in and it melts into your skin in such a pretty natural way, but you can still see your skin underneath. The only issue with this product is that it creases so badly and you can kind of blend out the creasing and I feel like it's fine. But the other issue for me is that it doesn't last on the skin that well, which is somewhat to be expected with lighter coverage products they're not always going to stay in place as well as a product that has more coverage that's longer lasting. So, you know, as much as I like this, I feel like it's not practical for me, at, at least during the summertime when it is so hot outside because the creasing is a little bit too much and it just wears away so fast. Like after four hours, it basically disappears in certain areas. I would say if you have dry skin or you don't have a lot of lines under your eyes, if creasing is not a big concern for you, you might really like this because it has a gorgeous glowy finish finish. It is so pretty. It feels so good. It's just not long wearing enough for me, unfortunately. I usually love the Ulta Beauty brand. Like I said, there are a ton of underrated products from there I really enjoy, but unfortunately this one did not work out for me either. This is the Bouncy Eyeshadow and I have the shade Sugar Cookie. I picked this up because a lot of people were saying it was a dupe for Urban Decay's Moondust Eyeshadow. And in, in my opinion, it is definitely not a dupe. I forget the exact shade people were comparing this to. It was the one that looks like this on the, in the pan. I'll put it on the screen for you. I do have that one. But first of all, the textures are completely different. The Urban Decay Moondust eyeshadows have such an interesting texture because when you touch them, it feels like, like the shadow is so hard. It's not creamy at all. It basically is like this super hard, firmly pressed powder shadow. And then when you apply it to the eyes, you get like the most beautiful wash of glitter. It's so, so gorgeous. So I love that. I think it's really beautiful. There is a ColourPop shadow in the shade Ritz that ends up looking pretty similar on the eyes. But again, the textures are very different. The issue with this one is it's so subtle. I love the Urban Decay Moondust eyeshadow because it is intense. This one is so subtle. You just don't get the same effect. Like it does does not pack a punch like the Urban Decay shadow does. This one feels more similar to the ColourPop Super Shock shadows where it has like that bouncy, creamy texture and it does have like that cream to powder finish, 
but I feel like I would just prefer to go with the ColourPop Super Shock shadows. Those are less expensive too. Not significantly less expensive. I think this one was like $9 and then ColourPop's I believe are seven. But ColourPop's formula really is so much better. And again, those are very intense, very, very vibrant. If you're looking for a subtle wash of shimmer, that's the only way I would recommend this one, which some people do. Some people like a more subtle eyeshadow look. So if that is the case, then I do think you might enjoy this. But the other issue for me is that again, it creases on me. It's so strange. I don't have an issue with most eyeshadows creasing these days, even like eyeshadow sticks or cream shadows, but this one does not last on my eyes and it fades so much by the end of the day. So I just, I wasn't impressed by it. Definitely not a dupe in my, my opinion. I love LIS Beauty so, so much. They just launched a setting spray, which I am tempted to try because I've said this before, but like every single product from them has become an absolute favorite of mine. I've been using their bronzer stick a ton this summer. Also their setting powder, that's like my favorite under eye setting powder because it is so soft and pretty. But this mascara, it just, it doesn't do anything for my lashes. First of all, this is personal preference, but the wand is just a little bit too big. And because it is a curved wand, I feel like that makes it even more difficult to apply to the lashes. And it, it just makes a mess for me personally. It does not build well, so I can really only get like a subtle lash look. It claims to do a ton of things like curl the lashes, lengthen them, lift them, and I really don't get any of that from this mascara. It's just, it's so, so underwhelming and I'm so sad about it. I, this is the thing about mascaras, like sometimes the wand can make it or break it. So I'm kind of tempted. I just used up like a few mascaras within the last few months. I have them in my empties bin. I'm kind of, I'm kind of tempted to take one of those wands clean it off and try it with this mascara. Because I didn't have any issues with the formula flaking or smudging, I just couldn't get it to build well. And I wonder if part of the reason was the mascara one. Even if that works for me, I, I wouldn't recommend picking this up. It is a higher end mascara. It's not outrageously expensive. I think it's like 19. So compared to other brands at Sephora, that's a little bit less expensive, but $19 is still $19. Go with the Ami Cole one if you're looking for volume and length. And if you want, if you want like a lifted look, go with the Tower 28 one. That's the one I have on today. And I feel like that really opens up my eyes. I have tried so many sunscreens this summer and I mean, I probably need to push pause on buying new sunscreens because it does end up taking me a little while to get through each one. And at this point, I have like four or five open over on my vanity. And then I have like one upstairs, one in my car. So I probably need to push pause until I use some of them up. But I tried this one from the Inky List. I love products from the Inky List. Like they make some of my favorite skincare products. But I, th this doesn't make any sense to me. This is their polyglutamic acid dewy sunscreen SPF 30. They say this is ideal for dry skin because it's supposed to really hydrate the skin, give you a dewy glowy finish and lock in moisture. I do have more oily skin during the summertime, but the way this performed on my oily skin makes me convinced like if you have any sort of dryness, you'll hate this product. What do you guys think about this? Please let me know your thoughts on this. I, I'm just confused by it. I really would not consider this to be a very moisturizing formula. Like when you initially apply it, it does feel a little bit moisturizing as you blend it into the skin, but then it dries down and it definitely has like a true matte finish. There is absolutely no glow whatsoever let alone like a really dewy look. When you're first blending it in, it feels smooth, but then it starts to get like a little bit almost sticky and tacky. And I feel like makeup does not apply well on top of this product. And this could totally come down to personal preference, but I feel like I'm used to glowy or dewy sunscreens where when I wear foundation on top, it just like glides on and it looks super, super smooth. You know, this, this one might not be a bad option if you're looking for a matte sunscreen, but I have other matte sunscreens I like. There's one from Dermalogica that I've been using that is so good. I'll link that one below. I can't remember the exact name right now off the top of my head, but I'm, I guess I'm just confused by this one because I really would not consider it to be a glowy or dewy sunscreen. I also experience a lot of pilling when I use this. Like sometimes the actual sunscreen will pill if I have a certain moisturizer underneath. Sometimes my makeup will pill after the fact and it just, it's not great. It does not interact well with makeup. If I'm wearing it on its own and I do want more of a matte finish, it's fine. But I typically do prefer sunscreens that wear well under makeup because I do wear makeup most days.
Actually, there is another sunscreen I wanted to mention. Now, this one is not quite as bad as the one from the Inky List. If I had to choose between the two, I'd go with this one. Although this one has cons for different reasons. So this is the Sun Touchable Invisible Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. Now, I will say I love the Woe Glow. This one came out a few months ago, and then they just launched this one a few weeks ago. They're a little bit different. Like the Woe Glow definitely has a little bit of a tint to it, and it is very, very glowy. Whereas this one actually is translucent, like there is no tint. And this one has more of like a soft blurred finish. It looks matte on the skin, but it feels significantly different than the Inky List one. This one is very light, very silky. It blends in in seconds. Like there's no sticky or tacky feel to it like the one from the Inky List. It definitely has like that blurring, smoothing quality to it. So it feels really good on the skin and makeup initially applies really nicely on top, but my makeup won't really like settle down when I'm wearing it on top of this sunscreen. It kind of ends up moving around, slipping around. Like my skin has more of a slippery finish to it than I would prefer. It's strange because they actually say on the back that it gives you a smooth, poreless looking complexion and it also grips your makeup for long lasting wear, which I would not agree with. I actually like wearing this one without makeup on my skin because it does give my skin like that smooth finish, which is really nice to have if I don't have makeup on on top. But I I also love the Woe Glow without makeup because it does give you that really beautiful glow. So between the two, I, I always reach for the Woe Glow over this one. And if you're trying to decide between the two from e.l.f., I would recommend the Woe Glow. The only thing that I hear about the Woe Glow is that some people say it gives them too much of a glow. Like if you're using the proper amount of sunscreen, it might be a little bit too intense for you. So if that's the case, maybe you would prefer this one. But I do feel like this one, it's kind of underwhelming compared to the Woe Glow. I tried this eyeliner from Milani. This is their Stay Put Infinite Liner. And I will say this eyeliner does last so, so well. I would consider it to be like a true smudge proof, waterproof eyeliner. It's almost a little bit difficult to remove at the end of the night. So it definitely stays in place really well, but it's such a thick formula. I don't, I, I rarely say this, but I almost wonder if I got a bad one because I can't imagine they would make it this thick on purpose. Maybe they would just because they don't want it to actually like spill out of the packaging. But when I pull the brush out, like you can just see how thick and sticky it is. And because of that, when I go to actually like brush it on my eye, it ends up looking kind of clumpy. Like I apply too much product in certain areas and then it ends up looking streaky in other areas. And it makes an absolute mess because it is a black liquid liner that again, stays in place so well. So if you mess it up, it's kind of hard to clean it up and remove it. If this formula was a little bit thinner or if it came in a pen, it would be perfect because it is so long lasting. But I just find that it's kind of difficult to get like an even smooth line with this formula and this applicator. I, I will say I'm kind of biased because I'm not the biggest fan of this style of applicator anyway, but I just have a difficult time getting like a smooth even line. Actually, another eyeliner that I, I just don't love is this one from Essence. It's their super fine brush liner. This one goes on nicely. Like it's a very thin tapered brush. So you actually do get like the smooth even line, but this one does not last like the Milani one. If I could take the Milani formula and put it in this pen, that would be the perfect combo because I love how this applies, but the actual formula really isn't like a true waterproof formula. So if that's what you're looking for, I would skip over this one. This one's also not quite as dramatic as I would like it to be. When I use a black liner, I want like an intense black liner, not a soft black, not like a almost grayed out black, like an intense, dark, rich black. And this one is almost a little bit more subtle on the eyes, which you might like, but again, it does doesn't stay in place well. If you have very watery eyes or oily eyelids, I would skip over it. Speaking of Essence, I do have a few other products from them and normally Essence like nails their new launches. I have so many favorites from them. I just did a video on like the best and worst Essence products. I'll link it below. But I picked up a few other new launches that, that didn't work for me. I did grab the Positive Vibes Only Baked Highlighter. They did like a mini collection. I don't know if it was called like the Positive Vibes Only Collection. The only product that really jumped out at me was this highlighter. And it looks different online than it does in person. If I had seen this in person, I think I'm I'm probably would have skipped over it. Online, it kind of looks similar to like their pure nude baked blushes or even like an hourglass powder. I was kind of hoping this would be the same as their pure nude highlighter, which is strange because that's not my favorite formula, but I thought like a pure nude highlighter in a pink color would be so pretty for subtle makeup days. 
This is very metallic. It's very intense. It's not the same as the Pure Nude Baked Highlighter at all. It's very glittery on the skin and, and like I said, just like full on metallic. It's not flattering on me. I will say this looks better on the skin than it does when you swatch it. Like when I swatched this, I was like, that looks terrible. It looks dry. I didn't even want to put it on my skin, but I did because I bought it. I wanted to try it out. And on the skin, it's not quite as bad. It looks actually really pretty on bare skin or even on like foundation that that hasn't been set, but I have to set my makeup. Otherwise I will look so oily by the end of the day. So when I set my makeup with powder, even like a light powder, it kind of takes away from the way this sits. Like it doesn't sit well on top of powder products or any sort of dryness. The Essence Luminous Eye Tints were such a letdown. I feel like these are playing a trick on me because every time I swatch them or like I, I start talking about how much I don't like them, I feel like in the back of my mind, I'm like, wait, do I actually like them? but I don't. These do not swatch in the way that they apply to the eyes. When you apply them to the eyes, they look patchy and they look uneven and like part of the pigment disappears in certain areas where it does look smooth in others. But in the end, they end up creasing on me really, really badly by the end of the day. And like I said earlier, when I was talking about that Ulta shadow, I don't have a lot of issues with eyeshadow creasing. Whether I use an eyeshadow primer or not, that hasn't been a big issue for me in the last year or two because my eyelids are a little bit more dry than oily. But you know, these just don't do it for me. I will say the shade Gleaming Charm could probably be used as like an inner corner highlight because you can apply it heavily in that area. You don't really have to do a lot of blending, but if you're going to be applying these and blending them out, they're, they're basically going to disappear or end up looking streaky. I just wouldn't recommend them. There are so many liquid shadows out there, like so many that look even and smooth and a ton of eyeshadow sticks these days that give a similar effect that actually last on the eyes. I picked up this Makeup Revolution Glaze Lip Oil because I was doing a video on like a ton of drugstore lip oils, which I'll link below if you want to check it out. This was one of the worst lip oils I tried. It, it has a lot of cons for me. First of all, it does have a very strong scent. It's not, it's not like a good scent to me. It almost smells like a spicy cherry chapstick. It has like that, you know how like some lip plumpers almost have like a little bit of like a sharp scent to them? That's what this smells like mixed with cherry chapstick. I know some people love the cherry chapstick scent, but I don't like that. It just, it's never really appealed to me. This is such a runny liquidy formula. Like if I tip this upside down, it would all pour out. And I actually did that on accident. I think I said that in my lip oil video that I thought that would happen. And then when I was swatching them, I wasn't paying attention and I tipped it and I lost like like half the product. So I do feel like this probably could leak. It doesn't have like that click closure. So I feel like if this is just like laying sideways and you don't close it tight enough, it probably would leak out of the bottle. Because it is such a thin runny formula, it wears off my lips in like five minutes, maybe even less. So it looks pretty when you initially apply it. Like it has that thin, glossy, juicy look, but it's gone in less than five minutes. So there are other lip oils out there that are significantly better. I just don't recommend this one. I would say if you're looking for an alternative, the Profusion Lip Oil Formula is also very, very thin. And that's not like a complete long lasting formula, but it definitely lasts longer than this one. And also the scent, I just feel like kind of gives me a little bit of a headache. I know I talked about this in a video. I don't know if I did like a speed reviews video, but I wanted to share like one final update on this because I tried so hard to get this to work for me. The Pacifica Dreamlit Glow Concealer. What have you left a comment that said, I think it said, I've never tried. No, I've Either I've never tried or I've never met a Pacifica product I didn't like. Poor Pacifica, I just thought it was so funny because I feel like I've read very similar comments throughout the years and I keep trying the brand. Like I want to like the brand so, so much. They sent me PR a while ago and the person I was talking to was honestly so kind, so sweet, but I just feel like a lot of their products just don't end up working out for me. And I keep trying them. I keep wanting to love them. Their Dreamlit Glow Concealer is something that initially I thought other people might really enjoy, but I don't know. There are just so many good concealers out there that I feel like I can't really recommend picking this up because I feel like you'll end up wasting your money on it. It's a $16 concealer, so it's hard to say like, take a chance on it because it could work for you because $16 is a lot. And it looks pretty when you initially apply it to the skin. It has almost like a little bit of 
it looks so pretty when you swatch it. That's the problem with a lot of these products. It throws me off because when I swatch them or when I initially apply them to the skin, like they look good. This one feels very creamy and it definitely has like this smooth quality to it. I almost wonder like if this was a foundation, if it would be better on the skin. But again, I feel like the end result would be the same. And for me, it just looks very cakey after a few hours. It looks heavy, like it doesn't wear well on my skin. The coverage is there, but it almost gets like a little bit thicker as the day goes on. I guess I kind of wonder, like if you have dry skin, maybe you would like it because it does have like this soft, natural satin finish to it. But it's not like people who have dry skin are all of a sudden like, yeah, I'm okay with a cakey concealer by the end of the day. So for that reason, it's just, it's not for me. I also find that when I start to blend this out, like sometimes it picks up on itself or like the brush will end up picking up too much product and it looks patchy in one area and then I go in with more. Like it doesn't have a perfect seamless blend when I use a brush. If I use my fingers, which I don't love to do for concealer, it's a little better. Like I, I try every method when I'm testing products. And if you pat this in with your finger, like a very small amount, it looks a little bit better, but not quite as smooth because you don't get like that diffused look you get with a brush. So I don't know, again, just kind of like a high maintenance formula. Some high maintenance formulas or high maintenance products are worth it because the end result is so good. But some products are high maintenance like this one or what was the other one I mentioned? I can't remember. I thought I said another one of these was high maintenance. Some high maintenance products are not worth it because in the end they don't look that great anyway. And that's how I feel about the Pacifica one. So unfortunately, another fail from Pacifica. I feel like I should probably take a break when it comes to the brand. I said that last year, but then they launched products this year that looked really good. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the new e.l.f. Off Makeup Remover. It says that it easily removes even waterproof makeup, which I just don't find to be the case. It's very, very gentle, but it doesn't do a great job of removing my eye makeup. I feel like I have to really rub my eyes and go over the same area multiple times with this product to get all of my eye makeup off. And then I end up using so, so much of this. Because of that, I feel like I'm going to end up going through this so fast if I keep using it on my face and my eyes. So I am going to finish using this, but I'm just going to use it on my face. And then I'll use my Garnier Micellar Water, the waterproof version to remove my eye makeup. That has been my go-to. I don't know if this has the same ingredients as a micellar water. I haven't looked into it that closely, but I feel like it, it serves the same purpose as a micellar water, but I love the Garnier one so much better, especially the waterproof version. And I actually looked it up because like I said, I felt like I was going through this kind of fast. So this is $7 for 4.3 fluid ounces. So kind of close to like $2 an ounce, not exactly, but the Garnier one ends up being less than a dollar per ounce. So this one is twice as expensive price per ounce, which that doesn't always matter to me when it comes to every single product but it does matter when it's something that I use up fully. Like I go through my micellar, micellar water fairly quickly and end up repurchasing it over and over. So if I was to stick with this one, I would end up spending more money and repurchasing it more often. And, and I just, I don't know, I can't justify that because it doesn't do a great job of removing my eye makeup anyway. Okay, that's everything I wanted to share in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, I'll link a couple of other ones on the screen for you that I've filmed over the last few months. And of course, I'll link alternatives to these products in the description box in case you're looking for something different. But thanks for being here. Thank you so much for spending time watching one of my videos. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.